Hi, welcome to Your Health Matters here at UH County Medical Center featuring Dr. Benjamin Bryant, Chief of Staff and Chief General Surgeon with uh, the hospital here. Doc, uh, boy, the weather's been absolutely beautiful. We hope it continues. I know. We, we hope it continues for the rest of, uh, certainly for the rest of August. I think we get a couple of days in a row here and then a little rain maybe this weekend, but... Uh, well, as long as it doesn't get too hot, I think. I yeah. Think we're all right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We got some... Uh, Yes, with us today. Well, we do indeed on, a, on a, uh, an issue that I think people will come to see as crucial to our community. Connie, as you know, we have uh, a lot of uh, senior citizens in our, in our county and in our town. And uh, an issue is going to be discussed today that is of vital importance to our seniors. Uh, I'm very uh, pleased that uh, our Hospital of Home Nurse uh, Denise Brown was able to join us today. Uh, thanks for coming, Denise. Thank you for having me. Uh, Denise is going to introduce our guests, and then we will have a discussion of the uh, of the senior levy, and we'll find out what that is and why it's so important. Thank you, Dr. Bryant. Um, yes, working with the Hospital to Home program, um, I've been very fortunate to become familiar with the senior levy and the major impact it has in the, in the local community resource centers um, and the services that we can provide our communities. So we're very fortunate today to have Patrick Arcaro, the Executive Director of Job and Family Services, and Deborah Newcomb, Executive Director of the Conneaut Human Resource Center, um, here to speak with us today to kind of um, provide us some background and education in regards to the senior levy and the impact it has on these wonderful programs we can offer. What, uh, what is the senior levy? Uh, the senior levy, Doc, is a uh, property tax levy that was first originally passed in 2000, and it generates roughly $1.8 million a year. And that money is all, it's available, the services that are underneath the senior levy is available to in every township of the county for any person who's age 16 over. So that levy is, the, the proceeds of that levy are restricted to the county? Correct, Asheville County, have to be resident of Asheville County and 60 or older. Mm -hmm. um, and the funds are distributed among four main categories, in-home care, transportation, protective services, and education and wellness. Okay. Of course, some of those categories have other things broken down in, into those categories as well. So, uh, that sounds like a pretty, like it would be a pretty substantial portion of the budget. The services? Well, the, the levy. Yeah, um, in terms of job and family services? Yes. It, it is actually a very minute part of our budget. Okay, um, but I mean as it affects the seniors. Yes, as it, as it affects the seniors, yeah. On $1.8 million, all that money, like I said, goes into seniors for or the services for the seniors. We contract with community service providers. The County Human Resource Center is one of them. Um, country Neighbor, Regional Home Health. Um, Asheville Senior Center, Geneva Senior Center. So we try to hit every single township in every single area of the county. I see. And one of the beauties of the senior levy, it was a five-year levy. So when we did it in 2000, when it was passed, uh, we, the county commissioners at that time appointed a senior services levy advisory board to oversee the funds. They make recommendations uh, to the commissioners along with input from the staff at Job and Family Services. They administer that that money for the citizens of the county. But that gives us, gave us an opportunity to, you know, to let people know what we were accomplishing. And it's been renewed overwhelmingly every five years. Usually passes by over 70% every time we go. And actually, that was a good point that Deb brought up. When it was first originally passed, it generated 1.5 million. And as we went, because aging is universal, the aging population seems to be growing. So we've actually run out of money. And this last uh, renewal, we did a replacement on the ballot, and so it generated an additional three hundred thousand dollars, which puts us up to the one point eight. Um, those that money is already being spent towards services as well, um, because that need is so great. I mean, Deb can speak to the fact that she has waiting lists as well do some of the other providers. Yeah. And I think what the senior levy board was looking at is the demographics in Asheville County shifting over the next ten years. And, uh, in 2010 census, I think our senior population was like 21% of the total population, which is about 100,000. And projections for 2020 are 29% or, or a little higher. So you know there's going to be a different demand for services, different needs uh, based on a lot of our seniors, uh, how they age and what, what their needs are at the time, more mobile or, in, or more home care oriented. But uh, 
I, I like the idea that we've done 60 and over. We haven't made it income-based eligibility or anything like that because we knew a lot of seniors are isolated. You know, they don't have family here. They have some friends and maybe they're church people. But That's an extremely important point. Yes. We, we run into that all the time, of course. Debbie, specifically, like, um, I'm a senior citizen. Um, That's what, right. It <laughs> have been for a while. <laughs> but what do you, what do you specifically, get from this if it passes again which i hope well it does. for locally for the city of conneaut we cover a wide service area which includes monroe kingsville north kingsville oh. dorset and pierpont so we have a very large service area you know conneaut alone is 27 square miles plus those uh, surrounding townships but with the help of job and family services and the levy board uh, we have been able to receive grants for homemaker services which is part of one of the programs in here, what we call in-home care. And that's the cleaning of someone's home at least twice a month, or when they get out of the hospital, sometimes we'll do every week until they're back on their feet again. But we provide a homemaker in that home who's tested and background checked and goes in and cleans. And we have a list of items that we do for them, dusting, sweeping, make beds. Uh, some seniors require laundry services because you know their, their utilities are in the basement. They can't. Right. They can't be mobile that way. Um, we receive about 40000 I believe, for homemaker services now. We have 65 active clients uh, as of today, and um, it's, a, it's just such a vital service. And then the other portion is what we call the chore handyman, where we have a handyman on staff who will go and change a light bulb, um, you know, something that someone that has arthritis, you know, isn't able to do or... Uh, change uh, filters on their furnaces, uh, defrost refrigerators. Our biggest uh, chore in the summer is cutting lawns. Right. Uh, and the uh, seniors that are trying to maintain their independence in their home, own home, you know, that's sometimes difficult. They provide all the supplies and equipment. Um, sometimes we'll help them with those if they're not able to purchase them through another program I have at the center, an emergency assistance. And that way they can keep their homes well maintained and, you know, stay in their homes just a little bit longer. So they will mow the lawn? Yes. We, we what about cooking or anything like that? We're only home care, which is okay. with home, which is cleaning only. Okay. Um, there is available to them through this levy through Escrow County Community Action and I think Country Neighbor down south, they do home delivery meals. Okay. So as an agency, we refer people to those programs as well, which is a hot meal every day. Um, so that's been a, a really vital, and we still have our congregate meal sites. So every day, Monday through Friday, a senior can come in uh, 60 and over and have lunch, socialize, um, be part of our program activities. Where would they go to do that? The Connie Human Resources Center. We actually have an education and wellness grant to the senior levy as well. Uh, they have programming Monday through Friday that offers, a, UHS is a big partner, they're offering healthy forum lunches nutrition, doing health screenings, uh, we have Bible study, we have Winnebuck Bingo, which seniors really love. So, uh, and what is the address of the, of the... 327 Mill Street. 327 Mill Street. In Kania, the number is 593-5273. You can Gosh. always call 211 and they will refer you to us. Call 211. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, our average senior uh, lunch is between 40 and 45 people a day. Wow. Now, people out in the, in the public who are hearing this program, okay, uh, who this affects, the, 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 elder, the more elderly population, they will know how important what Debbie just said is. They will know how, how, what an impact this can have on people's lives. Because these people, I can tell you from the... Uh, medical side of the street okay that uh, and everybody knows this that there's a very big impulse from the feds from the payers to have people receive care uh, in the lowest cost center possible you know so that means well we want we want them to leave the hospital faster so that's putting pressure on our extended care facilities and there's also uh, uh, an imperative there to maintain people in their homes uh, as, as, as much as possible, you know, safely. And uh, people receiving care in the homes, that's the lowest cost center there is. Absolutely. Okay? 
So what this means is with the so-called great tsunami, which is the boomers, uh, that, that, that's you, that's me, <laughs> yeah. uh, who, are, who are turning gray or white as the case may be, uh, that, that fraction, as Deb has just pointed out, is, is increasing. So we're having more and more and more people enter into that segment of the population at the same time that there is more and more impetus to have people maintain in their homes. That puts tremendous pressure on programs like this. Now you get, uh, you get somebody in their home and their, their home hasn't been cleaned and they're trying to live. You know, that's, that's a depressing situation and that makes people feel isolated uh, that makes people feel like there's no help, uh, they're, they're, there's no one that they can turn to, and that has a very negative impact on people's well-being and on their ability to keep functioning and, 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 and stay independent. But then somebody comes in, their house is nice and clean, Some, they, have a, they have a burnt out light in exactly the wrong place, and somebody comes in and fixes that, and wow, it feels like somebody cares and there is help for me. I mean, the impact of these things can't be overstated, okay? So that's one thing. And another thing is, even if you're not a member of that population, okay, you will be. Mm -hmm. That's right. You will be, and you're going to want these programs to be healthy and vital and there for you when you need them. <clears throat> now, the government, uh, you know, the state government, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, absent levies like this can only do so much. What's really going on here is the people of a community making the decision to help people in their own community. And that, 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 I mean, that's what community is all about. So, uh, it, it, you know, it, 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 should, it should be obvious that what's going on here is a vital service, a, a number of vital services to our seniors and that our seniors are, are increasing in number, and it makes, well, that, you know, I think people do get this. I think people get it, and I think that that's probably why we see the margin for approval as high as it is. And also, Doc, it's not just for the, the seniors themselves, but for their family, because well, it, it gives some respite to the, to the caregiver as well as to the family members point. and some peace of mind to know that these services are available when they can't be there for their, their loved ones. So. Um, and also, a few months ago, you might remember, we were here to talk about adult protective services. And that's a large part of what's funded underneath the levy as well. So if we did not have the funding from the senior levy for adult protective services, we essentially wouldn't have adult protective services in right. Nashville County. Because the funding from the state and the feds is Went just away. horrible. Yeah. It didn't go away, but it's We it's have horrible. some still? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it did not increase much. it a little bit. Yeah. But for 702 square miles in Nashville County, it's very hard to provide adult protective services. Biggest services. geographic yeah. county in, yeah. in, in Ohio. Yeah. And people may recall, recall that the, the, the uh, video from that presentation is up on the YouTube site. And people can review it and review what Adult Protective Services is and how important it is. Okay, and, and you know, we, we talked about that the last time you were here. Uh, if there is someone who is appropriate for Adult Protective Services, then the impact of that service on that person and their family and their life is enormous, you know, and unfortunately there is a need for adult protective services. We read about it in the paper, we see it on TV, we hear these horrendous stories, and it's very important in a healthy community that cares about its people that that kind of service be available when it's needed because it can, it, can, it can take a situation that's going bad and prevent it from getting worse. It, it can take a situation that's already gotten in trouble and make it better. And if that's all there is, <laughs> it's crucial. And I, I've been so fortunate in the hospital to home program to actually be able to witness these programs in action and how they network, um, you know, between being in the homes to do the chores and help with lawn care and adult protective services. And it's like a, a resource community of its own you know by having those people go into the home and do those chores and help with the lawn care if they see a concern that might be their day that 
one of the, one of the other ones of us aren't there, they can report that it's like that constant support system there that, like you said, makes the, the person and their family feel so much better. Um, and, I, and I've witnessed the people from your center go in and they're just so um, respectful and professional and you know the people look forward to seeing them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's just amazing. It gives them that, that confidence and independence to, to stay at home longer and to, to focus on their health. It's really, really a powerful system. I, I can vouch that uh, my wife has a 97-year-old aunt. She'll be 98 this month. And one thing she's got going for her is the independence thing. And it's kept her in her house, you know. And uh, You ask some old person how important it is to them. Yes. That they get to Very stay in so. their own house. You're exactly right. And uh, it means a lot to her. And uh, um, I know we've... we've I've been in contact, or my wife's been in contact with the Human Resource Center for different things regarding this issue, and they've been very, very helpful. I have to mention too, Doc, when you and I did AM Live, um, I got a phone call from a guy that I know, Debbie, knows who I'm talking about, he hates taxes. And he was so against the senior services levy, and I said, how old are you? And he said, 50. I go, you're not too far from being a senior citizen yourself. And someday, like Doc said, Hopefully, all of us will become senior citizens, and you're going to have to. You might need this help, and uh, so I highly endorse this levy. It's it's something. Now, this will be on November. No, no. Oh no. We have uh, two years left. Two years. Oh left really? On this levy, yes. <clears throat> well, that five years has got to be really fast. great for you guys because yeah. it gives you you know gives you some predictability and stability. Right. Right. And the numbers, uh, you know, kind of speak for themselves when we talk about in-home care. They do an annual report that's available to the public, so you can see how your money's being spent. Uh, one of the areas we haven't talked about, I know Patrick, uh, it's his favorite part, transportation, which even though it's 23% um, of that budget, it's huge. It's a huge issue for many people who can't drive, get to appointments. Mm -hmm. I know that I think the UH has uh, some help with that for people who need medical appointments, but we kind of prioritize that because we want to make sure they get to their medical, their, their uh, dialysis appointment, whatever they need. But there's that other component of socialization, and that's, that's the tough area, Patrick will tell you, with the funding we have available. Uh, but uh, we are very fortunate that some of this helps with the Asheville County Transportation System, which comes to our center every day. Took our seniors to the Asheville County Fair yesterday, oh, where they could eat a lot of junk food, but they were they were thrilled to be able to go to the oh, fair. Well, I mean, you got to get some fun <laughs> yeah, out of that's it. That's right. <laughs> and, and we, we wouldn't be able to do that without that transportation. Wow, so, that's really um, wonderful. And the nice thing about it, this program being with Job and Family Services is they find out its funding sources based on that person's need too. You know, they have nursing home. Uh, which we know the high cost of nursing homes and that in-home care helps reduce that burden. Um, so it, it just is natural. And when we have someone like Denise said that we go into their home, if we see another need, we'll say, hey, did you know you have this available? And we bring them little flyers and notes and things like that. So because some of them don't like to ask for help. Well, sure. That's, that's they really They want to be independent and they might need just a little assistance, but they're kind of worried about you know, asking for help. And that's a good point too, with the Home Delivered Meals Program, that might be the only interaction that some of these seniors have throughout the day. Mm -hmm. you know, we hear stories that you know, a lot of these seniors have like five or 10 or 15 meals in their freezer because they can eat, but they, they take the meal just because they, they know that somebody's gonna come and visit them. And they don't have that interaction throughout the day if they don't have any family members or anybody else who can check on them. So. Yeah, and one of the things through education and wellness component is we have a well call. So if a family member <coughs> wants uh, us to check up on their loved one. We call every day in the mornings. Hey, are you okay? What do you need? That's fantastic. And, and that way it's a contact for them. And, oh, uh, that's fantastic. It's a relief for family members who are working. Um, it's, it's kind of funny because our staff will be chit-chatting for a while with them because they've gotten to know them so well. <laughs> um, and, and they look forward to that, that little call every day. So, oh, yeah. Um, but, sure. But uh, in the pro education and wellness uh, does that makes them a little bit more socialized and if they need something we'll help them so it's uh, been a real benefit to the community oh it's enormous it's enormous okay well now somebody out there is listening and they're and they're thinking and they're saying gosh i didn't know this stuff was available and and uh, maybe i would like to come down and have lunch or maybe uh maybe uh, it would really be helpful to me if somebody could deliver a meal to my home 
And they said, okay, well, we're supposed to call 211. Okay, so the person picks up the phone, calls 211, and what do they say then? Um, depending on what they're looking for, if they're looking for services available to seniors, they okay, will give them a list of them. So they'll, them they'll, 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 they'll say, I'm a senior, they'll call up 211 mm -hmm. and they'll say, hi, I'm a senior citizen. I heard that I can call this number and get some help. And I know that the operators, because we had the, the, the people from 211 on the, on the show here, mm -hmm. fantastic. Boy, did I learn a lot that day, mm -hmm. all right? And I know that those operators are trained. You know, they, 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 they know how to help navigate the conversation and, and make it easy for you, basically. And so you call up and you, and, and you, you say, I'm a senior, I, I'm looking you know, for some help in, uh, in meals or something. The operator there will be able to pick up on that and then and then make it very easy for you to get connected up with with uh, the programs that we're talking about here so uh, don't hesitate don't hesitate to call 211 uh, that's what they're there for that's what this whole thing is here for uh, I, I, I think that you're getting the idea that this is something that the community wants to do for, for itself, for its seniors. Uh, it's, it's, it's really important to a lot of people to be able to provide that service and to, and to do these good things. Now, you know, I mean, you've got the people who make the calls in the morning, you've got the people who do all these programs. You don't want to hurt their feelings, you know. <laughs> you, wanna, you, 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 want, you want to take advantage of, of what they're offering you. So please, don't, don't hesitate to call. I have a question. Uh you, Patrick, you can answer this. Um, obviously, you have enough money to get you through the next two years. Mm -hmm. So, you, do you have to monitor that really closely to make sure? We do. Um, Deb mentioned earlier the Senior Living Advisory Board, and those are our committee members. Some mm -hmm. retired, some are still working, who are appointed by the board commissioners to help us, Job Family Services, we administer the levy, to help us make decisions on where and how that money is spent. And I can tell you the conversations we have in that boardroom are just off the wall because it's just so hard to decide where we need to spend that money and what service is more important than others. Right. But one of the things we do do, Pat, is out of that $1.8 million that we have, we keep, um, it used to be $700,000 in reserve. And we do that because if the levy were to fail, we still would be able to provide six to nine months of services. Okay. Well, because of the demand has gotten so large, um, one, we did the replacement, but number two, we've lowered that reserve to 400000 so now we can only provide maybe three to four months wow. if the levy doesn't pass. So. And the reason being, Patrick will tell you when he mentioned waiting lists. Um, yeah. Right now, uh, I do not have any waiting lists for <coughs> services, which is unusual. But there are waiting lists for home delivered meals. There are waiting lists for, pers for home care services sometimes. And one of the components of this is also personal care. Uh, where someone's coming home from the hospital and needs uh, personal care. We do not provide that service, but we refer them to those agencies that do. Uh, but uh, that's a part of the reason is as the demand increases, you don't want to, we, our goal was not to have waiting lists when we, course, when we originally, course, and course. the goal of the levy in 2000 was to, to enhance, was to expand existing services and enhance. Now I think we're just trying to enhance, yeah. uh, we, we can't expand new services as much as, as we could in the past, but um, it does get a lot of the seniors to the table, at least when they know that there's these programs available that would normally come. How much would it cost per, would you go by the month or the year, a, a taxpayer out there to, to help if, if this passes? Hopefully it does. Uh, so much per $100,000 on a yeah, yeah, that's, that's a loving I can't, question. I that's can't a loving remember. question. I don't, yeah. Um, I should remember, but yeah. I don't. It's not that much, though. <laughs> it isn't, no. no. it's. Well, it's, it's, it's reasonable. Terms of, it's in terms of millage, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. It's a one mill. It's only one mill, um, so it's, yeah. Okay. It's always been a one mill. But the, when, we, when we did the replacement, it just brought the value of the levy up to today's standards versus what it was back in 2000 when it was already right. passed. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why it generated, you know, obviously another $300,000 more. Based, so. based on the valuation of the county. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sorry, I don't have that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but it does, uh, it, you know, it does il illustrate the uh, principle that many hands make light work. I mean, uh, when you spread the cost uh, <coughs> uh, across the entire tax base, then any individual taxpayer is not taking that big a hit. Okay. But then again, you know, 
we just finished hearing about the discussions in the boardroom and so on. What that tells us is, among other things, is, is this, it, this illustrates what's called local control, all right? We don't have people from outside the community coming in and telling us how your tax money is going to be spent. This is all people from within our community who live in our community and who, and who are addressing problems that exist within our community from funding sources from people within our community. So this is, this is all us, okay? So when we're talking about the millage for the senior levy, this is, this is our thing. This is not being imposed from outside. This is us taking care of ourselves and taking care of each other. And I think uh, that if we look at it in those terms, it, be, it becomes a no-brainer, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone from the Board of Commissioners on down to the service providers, some, some who I said are basically um, retired that are on the Senior Levy Board, everybody has a voice. That's why we, we like to call the Senior Levy a community partnership, because everybody gets Absolutely. involved in, in passing and providing the services. So. Yeah, and, and in this case, it truly is a community partnership. And they know our community. That's that's the beauty of it. Is uh, you know a lot of uh, paperwork we do for state and federal grants are are a lot of uh, loopholes, a lot of hoop jumping, and that. And oh sure, sure. The other thing I want to talk about, which isn't funded through the county, but we were able to partner with one of the providers here called Country Neighbor in Orwell, and we applied to the USDA grant for seniors and it's the commodity food program mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's because of these networking I've had with the other agencies that we were able to do this well to get that grant there's a lot of restrictions but um, I just want people to know if you are making income of 1287 or less a month you are eligible for a senior what we call a senior food box from the commodity program at USDA um, we have 80 on that <coughs> list right now I think we our next handout is this Friday, but they get a box of food, uh, which is cereal and fruits and vegetables and juices and things like that to get them through the month. Uh, but so that is income eligible, whereas this program is right. not. But, but that does exist. Yes. And, and you are the point people for that. Yes, absolutely. And so people could also bring that up when they call 211. Absolutely. And they would just say, I'm, I'd like to know if I qualify for the commodities program. Well, the interesting thing, Doc, is that we have a food pantry at our facility. So when people started signing up because it was a senior program, uh, we had we actually have more people coming in than we that were eligible for food pantry that did not. So um, I think the word senior and that it's you know we're here to help you is has really motivated them a little bit more to come in and share their income, share what they have so that, that they can get a benefit in return, so. Well, that, yeah, I mean, it's important. It's, it's important. And so that commodity, uh, the, the, the distribution takes place once per month? Yes, second Friday of every month. And uh, um, how do they actually get that? Do they they have just have to fill out, an, fill out an application. But I mean, how do they actually pick up, they have to come They have down. to come and pick it up that day, or they can have someone pick it up for them. I see. And either way. Okay. And some of our staff, if they know the senior will sign for them and pick it up for them so that they make sure See, they get it. So now, now how neighborly is that? Yeah, I know. You might be able to deliver it soon. Well, I'm hoping. Didn't USDA is very call? funny about picking it up that day and if you don't it goes back and I just don't like to send any of it back. Oh, yeah, so was this the same one that we used to advertise or promote on AM Live? Um, it used to be on Mondays. The produce distribution is still the first of Monday that every is, month. Yes, okay, that's produce. different. But this is kind of like, remember the old commodity programs where you could go get cheese, cheese and rice right, and things right. like that? This is similar to that program, but it's just limited to seniors 60 and over with a certain income level. Because okay. they get the two pounds of cheese, they get rice, they get pasta. Do they have to bring proof of... They have to sign an application with proof of um, location where they live, and they just have to verify that the income they're telling me is true. They don't have to bring in any paperwork to show me. They just have to say this is what I make, and they're signing that that's what they make. Because I remember years ago, there was a bunch of scammers out there that would go and get the cheese and then sell it. Well, <laughs> but it wasn't monitored like yeah. it is today. Well, and that's why they want everybody to pick up their commodity that day. Okay. Okay, um, and not have them left over where someone could you know do that. You're going to have that. 1% of people who even come into our pantry and we'll find they sell the food. Is that right? If we find that out, then they're, they're red flagged from the programming. And uh, 
but Magic Otay, we had the same problem with gas cards and other things in the past. Um, it's, I'll so it's, 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 it's always that little bit of the population that's going to take advantage, <laughs> but it's not it's not near at the programs. I would even I wouldn't even say it's five percent of the people we deal with. Maybe more. He, Patrick, you know, has a lot more programs that he works with, but uh, we're hoping that doesn't happen. But, sure. Uh, right now, we're, we're doing uh, a lot of produce, so we with our community garden in the back and Lake Erie Correctional Institution bringing us their leftover produce every Friday, so um, it's been a big, big So help. you have a garden this year? Yeah, we have a garden. Is it? It's the third year. It, is it? It's behind the center. Have the tomatoes ripened yet? No. <laughs> Nine, mine neither. Mine, no. <laughs> no. No, they picked um, garlic and onions and I don't know what else they had either cabbages were huge and things like that yeah. so but it's yeah it's so um, anything we can do to help and we now have an outreach coordinator that runs the garden program so anybody out there gardening you want to help out so people can volunteer and help out mm -hmm. gardening yeah yeah so we should and, be getting a bus soon and yes thanks to Patrick and the county commissioners uh, we are going to be in possession of an AXE bus that's been retired, Asheville County Transportation System bus that's been retired, and do some minor repairs to it, so we'll be able to, I think it seats eight. Yes, with eight, a wheelchair lift. With a wheelchair lift, so. Um, what do you do? I mean, I'm going to yeah. drive around town and pick, pick you up and bring you to lunch every day. I, I would be eligible. Yes. That's wonderful. And the lunches are pretty good. You just, the menus are pretty good. So we're very excited about that. So yeah, that was another great. another situation where it's, it's just the community. You know, the commissioner's could have taken that bus and sold it, you know, to somebody else for money. But, you know, they saw the need in, in Kanye for the use of a, of a retired bus that used to be on the road trans doing regular transportation and we were able to sell to the resource center for a dollar so great I'm wow. excited that's great mm -hmm. it'll be good and it'll hopefully advertise the senior levy we'll make yes. sure that people know it's been provided by the commissioners and the senior levy but um, we do a lot of picnicking and things with the seniors and some who maybe shouldn't be driving it helps to make sure they're they're safe sure. right. <laughs> right. Right. exactly Exactly. Well, I think that uh, uh, from the margins uh, that, that, that have occurred in terms of passage of the levy, I think that people probably do understand how important it is, but I'm, but I'm hoping that the information that was put across today uh, really underscores how vital this is to our town, to our county, and uh, that when it uh, comes up again on the ballot in a couple of years, people will remember this. People will, uh, people, oh yeah, yeah, okay. And, and, and I'm gonna guess that it's probably difficult in, in, in our community for anyone to not know somebody who, who is benefiting, who is being helped, or who certainly could benefit. Uh, so, I mean, this is, this is very personal. All right. Uh, well, we... Uh, we really appreciate you both taking the time sure. to come down and talk with us today. I think that this is something that our public really needs to hear. I'm sure they'll That's be right. back over Anytime. the next, next year or so. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we, 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 oh gosh, yes, we definitely, and, and we may do a, I don't know if we can, I don't know if we have the capability of doing a telethon on this show, but <laughs> well, that would be wonderful. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we certainly, we certainly, call in line. Yeah, <laughs> call in line. Yeah. we go live. But we certainly, uh, we certainly want to make sure that the public's aware right before the uh, right before the yeah. yes. the ballot comes up. So yeah, be great. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Well, thank you very much again. Thanks for having us for coming. Thank you. Remember, your health matters. We'll see you next time.